Now continuing on from the previous video where I was doing the historical VAR and conditional VAR. So we'll now proceed to estimate the parametric VAR and uh, conditional VAR using the Gaussian distribution or the normal distribution. Now before that, I'll just label this uh, part as historical VAR and conditional VAR. And we'll create a new part for parametric VAR and conditional VAR. Okay, and this will be based on the Gaussian distribution. You can feel free to use any other distributions which you think is appropriate for the return distribution. So in this case, uh, I will need a few things. I'll need the mean return, I'll need the standard deviation, and then after that, we'll need to compute the Z value, okay, or the inverse of the 5% probability. So the average return here, which is based on the rank return, I'll just type L3 hash, okay, so this will highlight the return series here. Okay, you can feel free to use the returns in column I as well, but I'll just use this, okay. Uh, then for standard deviation, I'll take standard deviation of the sample, so that's uh, sdef.s, and then I'll, again, the return series will be from column L. So this is the sample standard deviation, 2.62%. So the Z value here, okay, is the value at which there is a probability of 5%, okay, below the curve. And of course, this is uh, on the left-hand side. So for the Z value, I'll take the inverse, the norm as INV. So this will give you the inverse of the standard normal cumulative distribution. So the probability is based on 5% in this case. So that's a negative 1.64485. So just change to that. So in this case, uh, the VAR okay, uh, of the return series will be based on the return, the mean return plus uh, the standard deviation times the Z value, the inverse. So that will give us uh, negative 4.1783%. Now, that means that uh, they, within a 5% probability, okay, they are within a day, one day period, okay, there is uh, the stock could lose more than 4.1783%, okay, assuming a normal distribution. So, VAR is a loss measure, so often the VAR value is uh, expressed as a positive number since it's already a loss. So, just to make it uh, consistent, I'll just put a negative sign here, okay. So this will be positive. So I'll do the same for the historical VAR. So in the formula, I'll just enter a negative sign here. Okay, but that will affect the next formula. So I'll just change this to negative 05. Okay, so that it will filter the right series. And then of course, uh, but if you do this, the conditional VAR will still be negative. So let's insert a negative sign here. And then for the date previously, uh, we will just select based on the negative of 05. Okay, so that will give you the right number again. Okay, so VAR and conditional VAR is expressed in positive terms because VAR and conditional VARs are already loss measures. Okay, so this is our VAR. And then the next part is the conditional VAR. So for the conditional VAR, okay, we will have to first compute, okay, again, the inverse or the standard normal variable, which is the Z here. Okay, and to do that, we need to calculate the another Z value, okay, for the location of the conditional VAR. So that will be one over the the significance level, multiplied by one over square root of two times pi. And then we'll multiply by the exponential of negative 0 0.5, multiplied by the Z value, okay, that we obtain through the Gaussian distribution to the power of two. Okay, so this is the inverse of that standard normal variable. And of course, it has to be negative. Okay, so let's not forget the negative sign here. And then, so now the, condi the conditional VAR will be the mean plus the standard deviation multiplied by the uppercase Z value here. So this is our conditional VAR. And of course, don't forget that uh, VAR or conditional VAR is expressed in absolute terms, so that's 5.273%. So in other words, there's a 5% chance that within a day, the loss could be more than 4.1783%. And if the VAR is exceeded, then the stock could lose on the average 5.27%. Then of course, we can change this to 1% to see the impact. Okay, and you can see that oftentimes the historical VAR may not be the same as the parametric VAR and conditional VAR. Okay, and that's because the distributions uh, that we obtain through the historical returns may not be normally distributed.
So in the next video series, we'll see how we can incorporate skewness and ketosis into estimating the VAR and conditional VAR.